Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Project Fair Lady. And today on the channel, folks, I'm uh, sorting out, or I'm in the process of sorting out, all the body loom wiring which runs in the entire area of the engine bay that comes out in front of each uh, each door on each side runs from the inside which runs all your headlights and uh, you know a lot of stuff that integrates into the engine wiring loom uh, it holds all of the uh, fuses and relays in the engine bay and it was in pretty poor condition in this thing so we're going to be going over that and fixing it all up Plus, I'm making some changes to the already new and modified fuel system. So, let's get into it. So this is our body loom, folks, for the engine bay on the Fair Lady. You know, it's obviously showing the ravages of time on it. There's, you know, bits of the loom that are split open in areas. The tape that's been used to tape a lot of the uh, convoluted tubing up has dried out and is peeling away everywhere and the loom's breaking open. It's very dirty and dusty in some areas and other areas it's very very oily and greasy over in that corner over there all that wiring was sitting around where your power steering pump and everything is and that is just drenched in filthy greasy gritty crap which has all got to be cleaned off at all so the first thing i'm going to do is go through and try and label everything to get a bit of a handle on what's what and where it's located and what sections of the loom need the most attention and what sections don't need any attention. I think there'll be very few of those. But uh, yeah, that's the first thing, folks. Just kind of try and get a bit of a handle on it and see where I go. So um, I'll be back shortly. Welcome back, folks. Everything's now labelled. Um, so I'm, I've, I've kind of got my head around what everything is and where it goes. There's a lot of uh, issues with the condition of stuff. Just as I say, this one's handy. You can see the the uh, insulation that's holding the uh, convoluted tubing shut has just basically deteriorated everywhere. You can see that join there has no tape on it. It's all kind of come apart. Um, you know, it's just the ravages of time, folks. All this kind of business anywhere where there's been any heat or anything like that to it, it's uh, it's pretty knackered and um, it, it's like that over most of the harness there are some areas that are okay but a lot of it is just you know knocked around in in one way or another everywhere you know like just you know look at this like it's just the same deal so there's also a bit of stuff that i have to wire in this is the fuel pressure and temperature sensor connector and because the uh, fuel pressure regulator is mounted um, quite close to the left hand side passenger guard I'm going to bring this through and add it into this loom which runs directly underneath that um, and I'll bring it through with one of these big grommets here that comes through into the cabin just in front of the doors on the front there um, there is a place where I can come in quite easily because I am having to remove something. It's, it's one of the AIV valve uh, connections which is no longer being used on the car. There's one on each side. I'm going to remove those from the loom and at the same time I'll, I'll put this in the place of one of them and I will probably uh, put a four pin Deutsch connector on there just to make it a lot easier for, him, for me to be able to connect and disconnect this. Um, if I have to in that area mainly just it's probably going to make it easier to connect it up and get the length of it right you know uh, there's a bit of stuff that I'm also removing through here power steering uh, fluid level I'm not going to be using that anymore the Hikus valve connections I'm not going to be using that anymore um, what have we got yeah there's just various bits and pieces there's a few things to remove over here also folks it looks like they use the same loom for two and four seaters and uh, because they have a bit of stuff to do with the wipers here there's uh, you know wiper fluid level sensor and stuff which isn't on this vehicle in that position you know and rear motor squirter which is actually in the back in the two seaters not in the front so these were actually taped up and I've, I've actually untaped those just to see what they were and my main wiper motor um, connector is that that guy there so neither of these need to be in there so I'll remove those as well see there's areas where the loom has actually come apart that just needs all sealing back up again there's, there's quite a bit of that 
um, it just needs a real thorough going over nowhere near um, as in-depth and as much of an effort that we had to do with the engine wiring loom but it's really just cleaning up all this old tape that's on there um, removing a lot of it and retaping it as we go just so that we don't lose positions for things uh, like these clips that hold the looms in and things like that just so they maintain their position if i strip everything off in one go i'm going to lose all that sort of stuff so i'm just going to kind of have to work through an end of each section which there are many ends on it and then just kind of work my way back repairing rewiring and retaping as i go so it's a bit of a job but uh, I'll get there folks, it's nothing that I can't handle. And I'll bring you guys back when uh, I have a bit of it done, so I'll see you in a bit. Little tiny update folks. I've started working my way along with this. You can see this is the uh, connector for the passenger side, in front of the passenger side front door. And you can see the, this is our uh, fuel pressure and fuel temperature sensor wires here coming through. That's our thing there. I'm actually going to put another connector on here, a four pin Deutsch, but for the moment it's just sitting like that. Um, and you can see I've been working my way along with fleece tape, unwrapping the old tape off the loom and uh, retaping it all up with fleece tape. Previously I mentioned that these, I assumed, were for the air injection in the exhaust sort of setup thing, but they're not. They're actually for the uh, indicators that sit in the guards. I narrowly avoided cutting them out. And uh, the issue is I'm using a US wiring diagram and they don't have uh, indicators in the guard. They uh, only have them like right at the very front, I think. But uh, yeah, almost cut these guys out. But uh, fortunately, got onto it just in time. So I'm working my way along, folks. So you can see here I am. This is all going along nicely. I've actually moved a couple of things here. I'm getting rid of the fog lights on the front and I'm moving the parking light in with the blinker you can see what i've done here i've actually drilled a hole in through the back here to go into that area that's already there and this is the unit that normally sits in your uh, fog light that is the parking light section of it so i've actually taken it out drilled this and i've actually fitted it into this so the wiring loom is going to be slightly different so i've separated the uh, parking light wire which which normally came out with the horn. This is your horn wire here, or one of the horn wires. These two were in a sleeve together, and this actually came out a lot longer. So I've actually reconfigured this one so that it now sits out so that it'll, it'll work really well in there instead of having it, you know, just not sort of working. I was working my way along over here, folks, and I thought, oh, next thing I'll do is I'm going to do this, this piece here, you know. So I've started peeling off all the insulation that's kind of fallen off to you know get it all get it all off kind of thing which is how I'm doing each section and then and then retape it now that I'm in the engine bay I'm going from fleece tape to the high temperature uh, engine bay tester tape and this is the point where I'm sort of transitioning where it goes uh, where it finishes its run from along the guard and then goes into the engine bay but anyway regardless of that I thought I'll pull the bottom off this, uh, this relay and fuse box so that I can bring the tape right in on these wires and start taping it all the way in so you won't see any of this kind of ugly wiring when it's all mounted back up in the engine bay. And uh, what I found is this guy here. I'll, uh, I'll just take the camera off, folks, so you can have a bit of a look. So this is a wire that goes into one of the fuses in there and it's been really badly soldered and it's not taped up and it is a power wire there is no tape on it so yeah the things that you find oh yeah it's got a plastic cover underneath but oh my god I just can't get over the stuff that's been done on this car anyway I just thought I'd show you that so I'm just going to um Depin that from the fuse holder, cut it, rewire it, you know, do it properly, heat shrink it and all that sort of stuff. And I'll check all these. These are all factory joins under here with this tape uh, where all these wires kind of, um, you know, go from one to three and all that sort of stuff. So they're generally crimped and we'll have um, some fairly decent sort of electrical tape over the top of them. 
as long as they look okay there's no real reason to disturb any of those but I will check them out all anyway as long as the tape's not falling off them and everything they sort of should be okay but yeah have a go at that anyway it's coming along folks I just thought I'd show you that I'll be back again shortly and that's that done folks another job out of the way there's only one section that I've left slightly unfinished on this that's this run here which ran up to the hikers valve and then onto the power steering fluid level sensor and then goes down to the drive side front ABS sensor now because I've deleted uh, those couple of things there's no need to bring this up the guard anymore so I'll run this around the bottom of the of the front rail so it's going to change the overall length of those um, last two pieces on the end of this so I that's the reason I haven't taped that up because I'm actually going to cut that back and then adjust the lengths of those to the right length so there's you know nothing untidy under there and it doesn't sit kind of weird or anything like that other than that all the other adjustments have been made uh, all this stuff over here that was to do with the additional wiring for the uh, you know windscreen washers and all that sort of stuff that's all been deleted all we have now here is just the one um, connection for the booster pump for the washers all the parking light stuff and everything's all been changed and it's, it's just complete now I've been over the whole thing been over all the connectors there's no more splits in the loom anywhere or anything like that it's all uh, it's all you know very tidy very neat you know just nice tightly wired up and uh, completely sealed so that should be good so uh, again another thing to tick off the list We'll move on to something else. So call me crazy, folks. After finishing most of the fuel system off, I've now decided to reconfigure a whole heap of it. And the reason I'm doing this, folks, other than the fact that I am obviously completely insane, is I've decided to upgrade the feed line to the front to AN8 from AN6. Originally, I'd set this up with AN6 feed and return. But at that time... My power goals were quite moderate, and again, just out of complete stupidity, I've uh, decided that I'm going to up the power goals quite substantially. So what that means is I've had to change a whole heap of stuff. One of the first things I've had to do, folks, is modify these brackets that I made up, which um, run down the chassis rail there and hold all the fuel lines up and everything. So you can see here... Uh, that is that one there is an AN6 that was originally the same so you can see how much I've opened this up to be able to fit the AN8 line through I was a little bit concerned I didn't have enough meat on there but uh, it seems to be okay there are screws that go through either side as you can see there that go through either side of that hole those holes so that's going to keep it held together sort of pretty stiffly so I don't think that's going to be a problem um, but that's also created a few other issues and it's also allowed me to kind of fix up a couple of things I was never really super happy with this arrangement here as far as the positions of everything I think I got it all fairly close but um, I was kind of limited by a lot of the fittings that I could buy and basically just what I had in my head of how I was going to kind of set it up and one of the biggest limitations here was this uh, this filter position uh, the outlet on this filter, like most of them, is AN10, and um, I had an, a straight AN6 going on there. And if you remember the uh, old footage, it came across just like this one here it does at the top there, and then sort of came back, and I was never really happy with that, just like I'm not real super happy with this one. But going to an AN8 line here means I can now use an AN10 to AN8 90 degree, uh, O-ring boss swivel fitting on here which means basically that will just line up like that so it'll just basically come out with a full flow 90 onto there I've, I've probably got to just pull that back a little bit which I, I sort of couldn't do before because of the mount I was taking advantage of some existing holes in the car to mount the up initially and just through my own laziness I, I kind of went with that rather than doing what I've done here which is making up another bracket which mounts off the original holes but allows me to position this fuel filter slightly differently 
so what it means is I've been able to move it. I'm actually going to move this again though now. I'm, I'm actually going to drop it down another 10 mil to give me more clearance up the top here because I, I now want to shift my um, ethanol content analyzer across this way because I'm I was never happy with how close it is to the uh, to the exhaust system here. I was originally going to build a heat shield across there, which would work, and I probably will still build a heat shield across this fuel system here. But by doing this and changing a few things, I think I'll be able to move probably 50 mil that way, which doesn't sound like a lot, but on something like this, increasing it from, you know, say 70 mil to 120 mil, is a big difference as far as just distance away from the exhaust being able to use these an 10 to an 8 full flow 90s has also fixed up the problem i had on this end because i was running into the chassis rail here to be able to get back up to the fuel tank you know and of course you want to try and keep all these um these pathways as straight as possible like um you know not putting too many bends and use the shallowest bends that you can unfortunately you you're often limited. You, you really don't want to be putting bends that are more than 90 like this in there, but sometimes you've just got no choice. And I figure at least this setup's on the return line. And this was my biggest issue, having an over 90 bend on the feed line to the front. So with this new setup, it means that I'm a lot happier with it, even though it probably would have been fine before had the AN6 line been substantial enough for the fuel requirements. But I just think it would have been possibly a limiting factor with everything and going to AN8 um, you know it just means that's just something I'm never really going to have to think about I'm probably going to change the fuel tank setup as well at the moment you saw one of the things that I uh, did on one of my earlier videos which was modify the fuel pump hanger which allowed me to fit the big single pump but um, I think I'm erring towards maybe fitting dual pumps so um, I may either try and work something out myself or go to the polar engineering pump setup. I'm, I'm not sure at this stage. It's something I need to put a lot more thought into. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So I've got one of these set up in the lathe at the moment. So I'll just take you over there and you can have a bit of a squiz of uh, the process of um, boring one of these out because I am doing it on the mini lathe rather than trying to do it in my drill mill just because I don't have uh, the right size uh, end mill to be able to do this, whereas I can set it up on the lathe and uh, do it that way. Bit of a dodgy setup I'm doing, but uh, I am running the lathe really slow and kind of being really careful because it, it's held in okay, but it's just not the best. Anyway, folks, as always here on the Aussie Shed, don't do what I do. I'm just an idiot. Just be safe and, yeah. Never mind that silly old man on YouTube. Close enough. All right, folks, I probably should explain why I did these on the lathe and why I didn't just um, run them through on the drill press, just using a twist drill and enlarge the holes. The reason being that um, on this first one in particular and even the second one a little bit, I was um, a little bit all over the place when I drilled these holes. If you notice this hole here, how it's not in the center, it's across this way a little bit, you know. And now with these um, holes here for the uh, AN8 lines, you can see there's not a lot of meat left on either side. So if I just run a drill bit through that to enlarge the hole, it would have blown out on this side. So the only way I could do these really accurately is either with an end mill of the right size or kind of use an end mill and work my way down down the edges on one side and around it sort of thing, which is just a huge pain in the ass. I'm not going to do that. Or if I throw it on the lathe, I can accurately set it up so that it is absolutely perfect on either side, you know, so there's no chance of kind of blowing out too far one way or the other. 
So that's the reason why I did them on the lathe, folks. I, I just realised I didn't really explain why I was doing it that way. Again, it's through my own uh, own sort of slackness initially when I started making these. Um, I was a little bit rough with the first one or two before I, uh, ended, I ended up making a jig to make them with in the end. And all the rest of them sort of turned out pretty good. But um, while I had the lathe set up to do these uh, these first couple, you know, I ran the rest of them through sort of thing. So, um, yeah, they've all turned out really good. Anyway, I've just finished making the bracket to mount the fuel filter up with. You saw just briefly it was uh, it was on there and the fuel filter was kind of relocated, but it was still in its rough stages. I've now finished that bracket and I'll go and grab it and I'll show you exactly um, what I've done with it. So that's our bracket there, folks. Um, the reason I built this bracket was because where I mounted this filter originally, I was kind of using part of the, the shape of the floor pan of the body to kind of mount it in. And it, and it actually fitted really well, but uh, what it did was it moved the fuel filter too far to the right, which kind of pushed everything out of line with where the, with where the lines come through. And I was able to kind of get around it and build it so that it all fitted when I was using all the AN6 stuff. But the fact that I had to change a few things to uh, put the AN8 line in made me just realize that I should actually just pull the whole thing apart and sort of redo it all properly and actually uh, make a bracket for this rather than trying to bolt this straight to the floor pan just so that I can then use the bracket to um, change position, you know. So um, a couple of issues with this were uh, mainly due to um, this, uh, this joiner here for the rear brake lines. It normally mounts in one of these two positions here on the back of the floor pan there's actually a, a mount with two threaded holes that sits off the floor pan about 15 mil it's about that long i'll show it to you when we go and mount this all back up and the bottom hole uh, had a bolt going through it where this brake line joiner goes okay so initially when i had this i didn't have this this piece here of um, billet mounted on there which i've only really just done and i was mounting this through the outside onto that hole but the issue was when the fuel filter was in, that bolt there and this block, because of the thickness of this block, with the bolt, I'll, I'll sort of dummy it up so you can see, it was interfering with the fuel filter and it was rubbing. It was only just rubbing, but it was rubbing and it's like, nah, that's not good enough. I need to fix it. So uh, I was trying to work out how I could do it. It's, because the brake lines are already made, they're the factory brake lines. You don't want to actually have to move it so far that it changed any of the brake lines and um, it was just a little bit awkward to do anything with it so that it wasn't in the way so what I worked out was I could actually um, flip it over like this and mount it up through that way which which almost doesn't move it at all you know like it keeps the brake line fairly sort of consistent to where it was the other issue when I had it just mounted on that flat plate was going through here when it was mounted here you can see when it's up higher, it actually sits behind this. So this killed two birds with one stone. Having it mounted there now, which is where it where it is, you can see there's a clear shot through under there with the brake line, and uh, it all works just um, just really really well. So it takes a little bit of thought doing this sort of stuff, you know, folks. That's um, just you know the nature of the beast when you're making stuff. Uh, sometimes you sort of got to do stuff and you know have a bit of sleep, a bit of a think on it until you actually work out um, how to do this. Like this really had me baffled for a while and then it turned out to be so simple. I was trying to think of all these different positions for it and I, I didn't even think to just roll it over. Um, you know, these things just, just slip you. Well, they do with me anyway. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it goes. And this is the filter here. So I'll, I'll sort of just give you a quick demo of how the whole lot just sort of goes together. So it sort of sits something like that, and um, and this guy, and bolts up through here. Lots of threaded holes in this, folks. Uh, 
that guy goes on there like that and you can see the clearance that issues that we have there and this is a countersunk bolt that I've got going in through here just because as I say when that's across like that um, you can see where this this problem was you can see this this closeness issue that I had and when this was mounted in here turn around the other way it just didn't work as it is now we've got a couple of mil there that's all we need really as long as it's it's clear you know so I guess we better mount it up on the car and see what it looks like in position so these are those two original factory mounts there folks that I was talking about uh, this one here was for the brake line you can see this brake lines sort of right next to it uh, I don't remember what that one was for but uh, obviously not something that I'm using so let's get this guy on You can see there's a rib nut behind here, folks, just in the previous little bit of footage. That um, just gives us this sort of third mounting position so that this bracket is just really nice and stiff, you know. There's no chance of it kind of pivoting. So those screws are on the one line, those bolts. goes across like so yeah a little brake line holder oh goes into its position And that's it folks, uh, everything works there. There's no sort of clearance issues anymore with anything. Uh, as I say, this brake line here is a straight shot now through there, underneath here, to where this line comes through here and goes across. So that'll all work really well now, whereas it was a little bit of an issue before. I'm still waiting on these uh, 90 degree AN10 to AN8 adapters, so I can't finish that connection between the two. But one thing you will notice is I've moved the uh, flex fuel sensor back this way and I've taken it across about 80 millimetres. So it's substantially further this way and away from this exhaust, which was my real issue with it. So it's come back a lot further. It means that obviously this all needs to be changed now. Um, you know, this basically I can get away with just shortening uh, this uh, return line back on this side, I think will be fine. So I've also bought it forward this way, which makes it easier to get back up into this area. And uh, this line here is actually going to be replaced with an AN8 line anyway. Um, you know, there's a 90 going up and then there's an angle, slight angle coming up off, up off that. So that'll be replaced. That one's been cut down. That one worked out perfectly. And we just have these two fittings to go on there now. So this is looking pretty good. Even though I was happy with what I had originally built there. Uh, the fact that I've kind of, you know, was second guessing whether I uh, made the right decision going to a single pump and AN6 lines. Really, it's it's more to do with uh, the ethanol than anything else. On, you know, pump 98, I'd be able to make the power I want with a single pump and an AN6 line. But because of the extra uh, demands when you run E85, the extra flow that you need, you know, you need to be able to pump so much more fuel and uh, get it to the engine, you know? So um, yeah, the whole E85 thing was the main reason that's pushed me into going to A and A and then probably into twin pumps, which is, I think is where I'm heading. But anyway, folks, hope you like this little video. Bit of wiring tidied up, a little bit of fiddling around with the fuel system and that. And uh, that's us for today. So um, as always, folks, I hope you like this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the Aussie Shed. And as always, folks, I'll bloody well see you on the next one. Cheers.